And with CHML traffic, here's Lex. This is, is some of the past comments uh, that were well uh, This is the Bill Kelly Show, 980 CFPL in London, 900 CHML Hamilton. Uh, it's uh, not often that a uh, provincial by-election uh, gets national attention. And, well, you could argue. Argue well, international attention because it uh, it was news in some parts of Israel too because of the comments of one of the candidates, uh, but that's what happened. Hamilton Center had their by election to replace Andrea Horvath, who resigned, of course, after the provincial election. Uh, John Best is here to talk about this. John, of course, is the publisher of the Bay Observer, been following this story uh, very closely, and uh, there are a lot of different uh, layers to this story too. John, welcome back to the show. Good to have you with us today. Good to be with you, Bill. Let me ask you, right after, I mean, I don't think anybody's surprised by the outcome. Sarah Jama wins the by-election, the NDP candidate there, by a considerable margin. She got over half the vote. Uh, but I don't know, that, that's, that's not the shock here. The shock, I guess, is, is some of the past comments uh, that were well-publicized, uh, uh, what some people classify as anti-Semitic, uh, anti-police, things of this nature. And I'm getting all sorts of, uh, of emails and messages today saying, well, what were the voters there thinking? And does that mean they agree with her anti-Semitic or her, you know, bust the cops up, all that sort of stuff? I, I, you can read too much into this right now, but uh, when you look at the character of the individual here, I, I, I suppose it does raise eyebrows that it was such a significant, significant victory. Well, uh, you know, I think the reality, Bill, is that Hamilton Center, uh, the, the only party that has any kind of organization there on a permanent basis is the NDP. So, you know, if you're an NDP candidate, there are people who will vote for a Labrador Retriever if it's uh, NDP. So what you get uh, when you're running for that party is instant sign locations, uh, instant boots on the ground, uh, which is becoming more difficult uh, with every campaign. So they have an organization. It, it, it was an NDP riding for the best part of the last 40 years with a couple of blips. And, and you know, it was Andrea Horvath's riding, which, which means that, um, you know, she always won by comfortable margins there as well. So, you know, you have a party, you know, you have a riding association that's in pretty good shape financially. So, no, really no surprise. Um, I, I don't think there really was an opportunity for another party to get in. You know, and, and as far as the controversial remarks, unfortunately, you know, that didn't really raise its head until very late in the campaign. Um, I think that the local media, um, you know, and I, I include myself, uh, you know, we all should have, uh, I think, taken a closer look at, at this candidacy, going right back to the time when she was talking about running for the nomination. Uh, nobody bothered, and uh, as a result, uh, you know, it just wasn't. Uh, it came 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 too late. It might have been, might not have made any difference anyway. But uh, certainly, the people that voted had a right to know what was going on. Well, I, I, your point's well taken, and and you know that you're talking about party loyalty here. You know, I'm, and I'm talking about the people that voted here, uh, and 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 maybe that was the the consequence that a lot of people were expecting anyway. Uh, I, I found the comments that she made over the last number of years, and we've covered here. I mean, you know, some of the protests at City Hall and other things. Uh, I, I found them in some cases reprehensible. Um, I certainly disagreed with the the, the principle behind them. But I, I, as I said to one of my emails this morning, I said, like, these are NDP supporters. They're going to vote, for, as you said, for the NDP candidate. It doesn't matter who it is, what they say, or anything else. It's NDP. That's where they're going to put their vote. And, and it's been that way for so long. As you mentioned, it was Andrea Horvath for a number of years, Dave Christofferson before that. Uh, and there's the history in that particular area. So uh, it, it is what it is. But I guess the question going forward now, uh, you know, what does, what does a, a candidate now, an MPP, or soon to be MPP, when she gets sworn in, how does she fit into the NDP caucus? I mean, this is a party that's trying to redefine itself right now, and and I don't know that radicalism is part of the thing that's going to get them, uh, you know, the, the kind of popularity that they need to actually form a government someday. Well, the Toronto Star is reporting that she issued kind of an apology um, for the anti-Semitic stuff, uh, but the uh, the Bene Brith has uh, put out a notice. They're 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 not having it. They they say she's trying to portray. The one event uh, where the video kind of went a little bit viral, trying to portray that as a one-off and just a poor choice of words, uh, when in fact uh, they say there was a pattern of this. And I, I happened across uh, a tweet that she'd done, you know, a couple of weeks before she made uh, the remarks that were on the video, and she's saying, uh, 
talking about McMaster students uh, hosting a, a banner uh, calling out Israel, and she says to the progressives who are for indigenous rights but who have been actively against uh, BDS, meaning the boycott of Israel for years, this annexation is on you too. So, uh, you know, it, it isn't a one-off. Uh, I think Merritt Stiles, the leader of the NDP, probably had a lot to do with orchestrating the apology. She met with uh, Jewish leaders in Toronto because she realized uh, that there was a, a worse, a bigger contagion that was happening. It was starting, you know, the, the JAMA issue was starting to focus the fact that, you know, the NDP caucus uh, has other people who maybe have views on, on the Israeli issue that are also a little extreme. So she's, she had a bit of a fire to put out there. Unfortunately, she, you know, we've learned a lot in this by-election, and a lot of it isn't very good, frankly. We, we've learned that, you know, the NDP will, will do anything to hang on to a seat. Uh, principles don't matter, even when the seat itself really didn't matter that much. And unfortunately, I think we've learned that the local media, uh, about the local media here, um, are kind of selective uh, as to whose background they, they try to dredge up. So it's uh, it's been a, a little bit of a disappointing experience. I guess the best thing we can say is that she did issue an apology. She did purge all of her e email or twi tweets and and uh, other posts, uh, you know, in order to get elected. But maybe that means she's going to mellow a little bit and and hopefully uh, represent that writing. She's been elected by about 11 percent of the voters there. But let's hope that she uh, that this is a learning experience for her as well. Well, it could be, I suppose. Uh, have we in, in the community just become numb to this sort of stuff, though? I mean, she's been in the news, as you've mentioned, on a number of occasions, uh, being you know a part of those protests, etc. Uh, she's definitely made some comments that, that are well called police Nazis, uh, but sadly, that seems to be a theme with some of the NDP members in this community. I mean, the the previous city councilor, now MP, uh, has similar views. I don't think he's ever worth the, the analogy of a Nazi, but I mean, he definitely has concern about policing. Uh, and I think the current city council in that area seems to echo that as well. So maybe we're just saying, oh, yeah, same old, same old, which is not to diminish it. I think it's still, you're right, something we should be paying attention to. But after a while, it just becomes white noise, unfortunately. Well, uh, as, as we were saying last week, we're in a situation now where federally, provincially, and uh, a good chunk of our local representation in the lower city hate the police. And uh, I just don't think that if you did a poll of, uh, of Hamilton Center, uh, that, that that represents the, the uh, majority view. I think it's a very fringe view, but uh, that's, uh, we've got representation at all three levels. I mean, she posted something uh, where, you know, it's not ambiguous. Police in Ontario have a record of arbitrarily killing babies, black, indigenous, racialized, disabled citizens, many who are Muslim, and those who are in crisis. It makes zero sense to increase their budgets or weaponry. Police escalate violence in high-stress situations. So, you know, none of this stuff is... Uh, one off it's it's uh, it's ingrained and uh, hopefully the experience being a, a representative with you know greater responsibilities and and being in a, a mainstream institution uh, will have a, um, uh, a you know a positive effect on some of her views well we can only hope i guess and we'll see how this develops over the days and weeks ahead uh, john great to have you back on the show today uh, enjoy the weekend we'll talk again soon thanks a lot bill Take care. John Best, the publisher of the Bay Observer. Uh, when we come back, interesting polling that's going out, and especially with a federal budget coming.